Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial learning AutoCAD 2013. Today we will draw together our pending tutorials homework. You can see it here on the screen. These were the measurements for our project. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to draw using what we've discussed so far. So if you saw all the previous tutorials, you should accomplish this desk drawing on your own. If you haven't seen those, you can do so by clicking the link on your screen. During this drawing session, I'm only using what we've covered so far. We have used only a few commands, different data entry methods, and the basic drawing aids. So just to be clear, this is not the way you will be drawing after the next couple of tutorials. Just your starting point. So let's begin by using two drawing aids we covered last time, snap and grid. And you should know how to call this dialog box. Just right click on top of either of the two buttons here and click settings. Now let's make sure both of them are checked. And here at snap, let's modify the X and Y spacing to one inch. We will do the same to grid spacing. And this will allow us to move our crosshair at fixed intervals of one inch in both the X and Y directions and also we'll have a visual reference for that. Now to start drafting, let's call the command line and use FA, which is ortho mode, to combine with rec entry. We give CAD the length of 5 feet 6 inches, moving our crosshair to the right to indicate the direction of the line and hit enter. We just use the direct entry method and this is what we will use for the rest of the rectangle. Look now at the tooltip so you can see the measurements I'm entering and you can follow but in the last segment however instead of specifying the lens or using direct entry we will use the closed feature of the command line by typing the letter C in our keyboard look at the tooltip uh, you see it here and when I hit enter it closes the rectangle automatically and now to locate the point in our drawing we will use our grid reference we just prepared. So each square from the grid equals one inch. So we'll use this to quick calculate based on the position we have from different points of reference. In order to do so, we will position our crosshair on top of the point of reference. And then we will start moving our crosshair slowly toward our intended initial point. Now look at the tooltip of our dynamic input here. It gives us a preview of how far we are from that point of reference and we can click now to select our initial point. Now we start creating our exterior part of the drawer easily with direct entry since we already know how to use it. Now for the final segment of the drawer we'll use the perpendicular suggestion of the object snap drawing aid and we will accept it. So we're done with the exterior lines and let's move to the interior lines now. We again use the grid line to position our initial point one inch below our top part and to the right of the outer line. And since we are using snap and grid combined, you can trust it's done precisely at that distance. Keep using the same method for drawing the drawers and the rest now is easy. Using again direct entry. A caution note is that if you are going to use click entry and do it just by sight, what of course you can do. If the line snaps on any unintended place due to the object snap being active, just undo the segment and make sure that when you are about to use a click entry, there is no suggestion from object, object snap on screen. So move your crosshair slowly until the undesired point has disappeared from the screen. Now, to draw the handles at the very center, we know that the size of our handles is 1 by 4 inches from the model we already saw. So, we do a quick math to find that we need to move 4 inches from either side and 2 inches from the top or the bottom to find our starting point to draw it. And then you should know how to do it on your own after you locate that point. Now, go ahead and try it on your own. and. We repeat the process for the other two handles 
and you can see it's not that hard because we have the grid as a visual help and snap is making sure we're not off at any point or at any connection and for the third time we're doing the same but later we'll learn how to avoid this repetition by using other commands like copy so you'll see a different way as you see we are done with this side now we are going to repeat the process for the right part but with some differences and a little bit faster because here we are basically repeating what we already did now just while doing this a little reminder if you think this will help someone you know feel free to share this video through the social media if you like the video when clicking like will show you the options to do so. An important detail to move and work throughout the screen is that for panning around the screen, you can press the wheel in your mouse and for zooming in or out, you need to scroll the mouse wheel. Now it is important that you know that since you're just starting to draw at some points, you might find yourself stuck or frustrated because something is not going the way I'm saying here. If by any chance something behaves in a different way or if you don't know how to do something or something weird is happening to your drawing, please post here for others to benefit also and I'll be more than willing to reply back as soon as possible. If you feel you want to ask a question privately, you can also PM me and I'll reply back the same way. For example, remember you need to use the escape key to cancel a command or the space bar or enter or sometimes right click to finish a command. So now going to the center part of the desk from our model, we can see that the first line needs to be drawn at four inches and the second one at one foot or 12 inches lower than that. So we will count four inches from the bottom side of the top of the desk. And then we will use the perpendicular option of the object snap. We repeat the same method for the second line from here and we'll count 12 inches or one foot and again we'll use the perpendicular connection. Now for the legs of the desk we know that from the floor to the desk it is six inches but we do not have the actual size of the legs at an angle so what we will do is to use a very handy way in CAD to find positional points by drawing lines of reference this is we draw a line to acquire a position and then after drawing a new object we erase that line this is really common in CAD so don't be afraid of using reference lines and then erase it our reference line here is going to be of six inches and then we use direct entry at 1.5 to get the width of the legs however we now erase this line because it was only for reference. Now to draw the legs, we will snap at this endpoint here and use at first polar entry method. See how I do it through the tooltip in the dynamic input. You specify first the lens. In this case, I'll use 6.3, which is an approximation. Then use the less than symbol and finally the number 75 for CAD to accept the angle. The actual line goes beyond our intended point because we didn't know the exact measurement of this line. Now you see it's almost impossible to snap at the other endpoint because that line is at the middle of our predefined patterns of squares from our snap and grid. The easiest way to get there is by turning off the snap drawing aid. I hope you know how to do it so use F9 and see here I just turn it off. Now when you get close to it you can see how object snap is offering that option to so click it and you see that now I'm using again F9 to turn back on the snap mode. Now we repeat the process with polar entry just like uh, we did with the first line and we get the second one now we need to resolve the issue of those lines being longer than what we need and for that we select both lines and just make sure you have object snap on now stretch the line toward our intersection point but you can do it uh, by click and drag on top of the blue square this blue square you see 
But you see now that the only option suggested here is the perpendicular, which is not the intersection. So what we're trying to do is almost impossible, and the question is why? Well, because snap is on. So turn it off again, use F9 so you can move freely. When we repeat the click and drag process with both lines, you can see now that in fact the intersection option of the object snap drawing aid appears and you can click there. Now we get it right. Now we finish with our first leg. For the second leg, however, we start the same way with our reference line. All the same, but we will use a different system. Erase the 6 inches reference line again and now let's see the advantages of using polar tracking. So let's right click on top of the bottom for polar tracking and when we do that all the possible angles for polar tracking appear here. You can see that the selected one by default is 90 degrees but we will change this one to the one that fits our needs. We can select it right from here see also here that the enable option and you can use any of this but let's just click on settings and go to the dial box here and from the increment angle section let's choose 15 degrees and why well because we know our angle is 75 so is 15 degrees apart from 90. again we're moving on screen driven by snap so let's turn it off and now see how it works when we approach any angle in increments of 15 degrees then polar tracking suggests a line when we use the 75 degrees angle line you can move on top of that line and just go following the line toward your intersection point click there then and you can see how fast in comparison with our first leg this was just because we use polar tracking now this is show you and double check that what we draw was right the line should be at 75 degrees angle and you can see that we were as precise as in the first leg but way faster with the second one now let's get rid of this dimension as let's move to the other side and repeat the process and without any doubts you can see the advantage of using drawing aids to draw faster and precisely on the other hand, there are other ways to do this way faster than this system, but that's for the next tutorial with other new commands. For example, we can copy our left side and paste it here, or we can create a mirror image of the left side. And we get the same result, but in both cases, either if you copy it or if you mirror it, it will take only a couple of seconds to do the whole right section so just to mention it again this is not the way you should be drawing after you learn some of the most used autocad commands in fact our next tutorial will be fully dedicated to some of these commands now let's draw our final part which is the center handle and here you can see that this center part is 3 feet wide or 36 inches. And since, and since we are positioning the handle at the very center, it should be at 16 inches from each side, considering that it is 4 inches wide. Also, with the height, we have at 4 inches height, and our handle is 1 inch high, so it should be at 1.5 inches from top or bottom. So we're going to make sure we draw a reference line at 16 inches from one side and this reference line is going to be of 1.5 inches. Now we can draw our handle toward the upper right part and then we eliminate the reference line. At this point you can see that we are finished with our homework and just for you to be sure we did it right, I will change the color of, of our desk and we'll move it to superimpose it on top of the one we use as our homework just to be sure it was done right at this point you can see there are no discrepancies so we accomplish our homework you just draw on your own with some guidance for sure but basically you did it right on your own and now for the next tutorial we will consider the basic object commands so please wait for it and finally, remember, you can subscribe to the channel and like this video. Again, thanks for watching and see you 
next time.